Welcome to the new 9 p.m. edition of Tucker Carlson Tonight. Over the past year and a half, nobody argued more forcefully or more fervently against Donald Trump's presidential candidacy than multimedia veteran Glenn Beck. Beck went on the road in support of rival candidate Ted Cruz, whom he said was anointed by God to stop Trump. At one point, he predicted that four years of a Trump presidency would lead, quote, to civil war or worse. Well, his exhortations went unheeded, and a Trump presidency is 11 days away. So where's Glenn Beck on all of this now? Glenn Beck joins us tonight. Glenn, great to see you. Good to see you, Tucker. First of all, let me say congratulations on your new show, and I'm honored that you would ask me to be on um, on your first show. Let me just well, clarify sure a couple it. things. You. you bet. Um, never said he was anointed by God to be president of the United States. I do believe that people are called, all of us are, you're called for your job, I'm called for my job. Right. All of us are called for a specific time. That doesn't mean that he's the only one that can do it. It doesn't mean any of that, and it certainly doesn't mean that God's going to make that happen. We have to all play our roles. So I appreciate what you said, but it's not exactly this, what it meant. Well, I think I, I remember it pretty well. You said you'd been praying for and with Ted Cruz and that you had heard that you believe that God had called him forward at this time. And so I just, my, my yes. question is really simple. Just like, yeah. And I'm not attacking you. I'm just wondering, because he no, no, didn't no. win and Trump did win, did it shake your faith? And what lessons, no. spiritual lessons, did you take from that? No. Um, None. I, I think that all of us are called by God. This kind of, and Tucker, you, you know this, um, uh, all of us are called by God to do certain things. And sometimes those things mean just take a stand. It doesn't mean that what you think is going to work out is worked out. Just right. you're called for this time. I happen to believe that all of us were called at this time to take a stand in the republic and to do the right thing. Right. But because Trump did win, and you believe that God did have a role in this election, what message do you think God is sending us by Trump's election? What does that What does that mean? I guess is what I'm asking. I can't speak for I can't speak for God. Um, I, I don't know. Here's the the message that I would get: um, yes. that uh, we are living in critical times, no different than we were living eight years ago, twelve years ago. Right. Things are very tough. We should humble ourselves, including me, and perhaps um, be a little more gentle with each other. Half yes. of the nation right now is freaking out that Donald Trump is the president. Right. I find it amazing that those people are freaking out, and yet they were the ones mocking and ridiculing us eight years ago and saying, what are you worried about? Oh, you're worried about a dictatorship. Well, now they're saying it. So I think what I've learned from this election is perhaps I need to be a little more humble, perhaps we need to be a little more kind to each other and listen right. to each other, or we're going to tear each other apart. I think that's really wise advice that we could all heed, me, me included. I guess I'm asking you because you seem to frame this election in moral terms, almost from the beginning, that it wasn't just a contest between people who had differing views, but it really was a contest between the good and the not good and, and, the, and the evil. And in your view, and I, I watched you on the, on, the, on the road, I was with you for part of it, you really posited Ted Cruz as the good guy in this. And then when he lost, I think I heard you say that he was, or maybe concede, that he was in fact maybe disingenuous and smarmy actually is the word you used. Why did you change your view so much on Ted Cruz? <laughs> wow. Um, I, because Ted Cruz, at the end, to me, yeah. Um, for that time period, seemed to come out of the blue and endorse when the time to endorse him was at the convention. Now, right. I had a different point of view uh, than he did on the convention. And if you're going to do it, you do it there, not when it appears that your guy's going to win. That just struck me as smarmy. But Ted and I are still good friends. I still believe he's a, a good, decent, honorable man. That's the way I felt that day when we talked. Right. So you're still in contact with him, and, and if he ran again, would you oh, yeah. support him again? Yes, I would. Well, what I'm not going to endorse anybody ever again. <laughs> that's probably, well, that's good advice for all of us. Yeah. What kind of president oh, yeah. do you think Trump will make? I don't know. I'm excited to see. Um, I think the uh, appointments that he has made, some of, them are, some of them are good, some of the things I'm concerned about, but I haven't said anything, uh, or I've tried not to say anything 
um, negative about him since the election. I've tried. Uh, unless there was something that was important to say. I want to see the man in action. We have, I gave him the same thing that I said about Barack Obama. The election is over and we fought hard and that's the time to fight hard at the primary and then the election. Now he has to be all of our presidents, a right. president. And the last president, I don't feel, ever reached out to do that. Um, I have seen on the very first night Donald Trump reached out. I've seen him reach out to people. I wouldn't have invited Al Gore to my office. He has reached out. Um, and I think it's really unfair to judge him now on what he did on the election. I have concerns about the way he ran his campaign. But now let's see if the office changes him and he is the guy everybody who supports him says he's going to be. I hope he is. Yes. Have your politics changed in watching all this? I, I've watched things that you've said in the last couple of months. You did a pretty a widely circulated interview with Samantha Bee. And I read people say, well, Glenn Beck is changing his views. Have your, have your political views changed? No. Um, I'm a libertarian. Uh, I have always been about principles. When I started the 912 project, it was about values and principles. Uh, I think this election became about winners and losers, uh, and I understand why Hillary Clinton and the press doesn't seem to get this yet. They're still trying to uh, figure out why Hillary Clinton lost. She lost because she was a horrible, dishonest candidate, and even the people who are raising money for her would say, I can't believe I'm raising money for her because she's so dishonest. That's why she lost. It's not it, it, Trump. Right tapped into a vein of the American people of where they were at, what they were feeling, and she was the all-time worst candidate of all time. That's what happened. Now, what are we going to do coming forward? How are we going to behave going forward? I haven't seen the press or many people at the higher echelons of the, of the left recognize the mistakes that they made on right. making people feel bad um, uh, that disagreed with Barack Obama, and I haven't seen anybody recognize that she was a bad candidate. Let's not run somebody like her again. No, that's, I think that's exactly right. So how, I mean, I remember, one of the reasons I want to talk to you is I remember sitting in my office eight or nine years ago and watching you on television and thinking you were the Ooh. single most talented anchor I had ever seen, and I know, I have some sense of what it takes. You were just hitting a hole in one every night. Just the difficulty level was awe-inspiring, and you were pulling it off. And then you left Fox, and it seemed to get much rockier from there. You had business problems, and you had a bunch of well-publicized lawsuits, et cetera. Do you regret not having a daily cable show, or do you think it was bad for you to have one? Oh, I regret, I regret, um, I regret a lot of things, because I overthink. Um, I regret, not, I don't think regret is the right word. I would love to have your platform where you can talk to um, as many people as you do in one setting. However, times are changing, and I bet on the future that the future is all on the internet. And so it's yeah. just different. It's just different. Do you, are, are, are the accounts true, or are they just nasty and politically motivated that your company, The Blaze, has had financial trouble? You oh my gosh, no. You and split with your no, no, business we, partner, et cetera. Yeah, we, we fired a lot of people because I changed directions of the company. I think right. we started, when those rumors were going around, we had 245 employees, uh, or 246, we now have 245, and I just left an office where we were talking about two other people that we're going to hire. So businesses changed direction, and that's what we did. Was it a poorly run company? Yeah, it was a poorly run company. Is it now? No, I don't think so. We're fine. Huh. Do you think, and this is something I've been thinking a lot about myself, do you think being in this business makes you happy? No. Has it made you happy? I, no. Um, uh, interacting with the people has made me happy. Um, thinking that um, my voice was uh, bigger than it is or should be, um, you know, in a way that, you know, hey, we can move people and we can change the world, in the end made me very unhappy. Um, it's not my job. That's not any of our jobs. Our job is just to be ourselves and try to be a good example. And by doing that, Tucker, 
Um, I've learned a lot in the last five years. Um, and the country is more fragile, in some ways, sturdier than it was. We, let's take a moment and just say, we made it through Barack Obama. Who saw that one coming? Yeah. Now, so we're stronger than we were, than I thought, but we're also um, in more trouble in some ways than I thought at least eight years ago. Uh, right. I, we're to a point to where Megan leaves, and now there are people who have, instead of celebrating you coming on the air and a new point of view, they're saying she's a traitor for, for leaving a company. That, I know nobody there believes any of that. That's ridiculous to think that. We have to stop thinking of each other as traitors if we go work for someplace else or just even disagree with each other. We've got to yeah. be able to disagree. Would you recommend this business to, like, your kids? I, I will tell you this, Tucker, and you've done it long enough to know, and you've kept your soul. You're a good guy. Um, so you don't, you're not a good guy? <laughs> Cause I've no, I don't you. know. I mean, I think there's a cost to oh, everything. Yeah. I wouldn't talk myself up to No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you're a good, from all reports that I've ever heard, and I, we've met a few times, but um, you're, uh, you're a good guy. So I'm not speaking generally to you, but I think um, this... Uh, job I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy I wouldn't wish the fame on my worst enemy huh. I think fame is more corrosive than anything else it is it's a horrible horrible thing if you don't have perspective if you if you want it um, because it, it will always fade and it will warp you. It will, it's the reason why Meryl Streep got on TV last yeah. night and had such confidence to say, we're right, in so many words, we're right, and we all know yes. this, and those little peasants out in the middle of the country, they're wrong. Because fame, when people are making money on you, when you are watching yourself everywhere, when people are coming up to you and saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, I love you, if you're not careful, you start to buy it, and then you yes. become Meryl Streep. That's a I think bad it's thing. A, I think it's a really wise answer. How do you avoid that? Um, uh, you get out the minute you want it. The minute, Tucker, that oh. somebody, w when you hear... Uh, rumors, and, and this happens in everybody's business, to everybody all the time. Somebody will start a whisper campaign that, you know, Tucker's failing, that thing's gonna go. And if your first reaction is, what do I have to do to fix it? Get out, get out. Yeah. Walk away, change, do something else. The minute you want it, I think you'll start making packs with the devil. Want fame for its own sake? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm putting that in my refrigerator. Thank you. Glenn Beck, I appreciate that. Thank you. Great to talk to you tonight. You bet.